action made to withdraw the present requirement of permits for the transportation of sand, soil and clay. More showers to be expected in several parts of the island. Our top story today. The decision made by the UNP parliamentary group has been conveyed to the Speaker by General Secretary of the Party, Akali Viraj Karivasam. Issuing a release, the Speaker's office said that Sajid Premadasa has been recognised as the opposition leader. The parliamentary group of the United National Party convened at the party headquarters of Sirikota earlier today. Sajid Premadasa also attended the meeting which was headed by Ranil Vikramasinghe. <laughs> While many parliamentarians attended the meeting, Ranil Vikramasinghe had nominated Sajid Premadasa as the opposition leader. A unanimous decision was then reached to appoint Sajid Premadasa as the leader of the opposition. <laughs> दुर्बलता the leader of the United National Party, Ranil Vikramasinghe, did not comment to the media. A group of young monks arrived at the Sirikota premises to hand over a letter to Ranil Vikramasinghe while the meeting was ongoing. Many MPs representing the UNP made comments insulting the Mahasangha in the past. Neither the leader of the UNP nor the working committee of the party commented in this regard. They have not apologized either. Therefore, we would like to request Ranil Vikramasinghe not to give nominations to those who insult the Mahasangha and fail to recognize Sri Lanka as a Buddhist state. After handing in the letter, the monks left the Sirikota premises. Welcome back. President Gotabe Rajpaksha on his official Twitter account extended an open invitation to global powers to invest in Sri Lanka. In a tweet, the president said, quote, I invite global powers including India and China to place your trust in us and invest in our future while respecting our unique identity as a sovereign nation, unquote. President Gotabe Rajapaksa says there is a need for rapid change in many facets of the education sector. This was stated during a discussion with the Ministers of Education and Higher Education at the Presidential Secretariat this morning. The implementation of a system where students will be enrolled to universities immediately after the results of the GCE A-level examinations are announced. Identifying institutions with vacancies and recruiting unemployed graduates after training them to suit the respective vacancies creating a workforce and tailoring the education curriculum to suit the country and its economy. The president highlighted creating higher education opportunities for all students who have passed the GCE A-level examination and giving priority to information technology are his main policies. Further, the importance of establishing universities in every district was also discussed. The president pointed out unused buildings located in large areas can be renovated and used for this purpose. The Cabinet of Ministers had decided to admit the President's policy statement Vistas of Prosperity and Splendour as the National Policy Framework. Let's now take a look at some of the weekly Cabinet decisions. 
The cabinet approved to upgrade the condition of national colleges of education up to university faculties. In addition, the cabinet approval was granted to appoint a committee of experts representing fields of education and higher education. There have been salary anomalies within the teaching service for a very long time and these are yet to be resolved. If we solve this issue, we will be forced to do the same for other state services. The Cabinet of Ministers approved the proposal to appoint a committee of experts to conduct studies and produce proposals for setting up educational closed service. For teachers, principals, instructors, teacher educators and Sri Lanka Education Administrative Service officials. <laughs> The cabinet also approved the proposal to implement the program Privituru Lanka National Environment Management Program immediately in order to continue the entire environmental management operations of the island. Further, the cabinet of ministers decided to withdraw the present requirement of permit for the transportation of sand, soil and clay. The police, security forces and the relevant authorities are currently monitoring whether sand in excess of the permit limit is being extracted. However, on a temporary basis, we have removed the requirements for a permit to transport sand. We will monitor any decline in the supply of sand and stone. We will analyze the results of this temporary decision and based on that, we will decide whether to revoke the decision or to implement it on a permanent basis. during a media briefing convened today by the Surakamu Sri Lanka organization, the following views were expressed with regard to the cabinet's decision to withdraw the sand, soil and clay transport permits. SM Chandrasena does not even understand 1 to 10. I made this statement the day after SM Chandrasena was sworn in as the Minister of Environment. His entire business is illegal sand mining and I state this with much responsibility. I spoke to Minister Bandhanugunavardhana last evening. He said the permit for mining will be further strengthened. However, the cabinet paper does not mention anything in this regard. There is no point in further strengthening as 82% of sand that was obtained through illegal sand mining is discovered during the transportation process. I urge the president to appoint a proper and knowledgeable person as the Minister of Environment. Uday Gammampila held discussions with us and promised to protect the environment. But today, where is Uday Gammampila? We urge the president to revoke this cabinet decision next week. The government has decided to reduce the registration and renewal fees charged for citizens departing for employment overseas. Issuing a statement, the Foreign Employment Bureau said, under the new tax regime, an individual will have to pay 16,416 rupees to register for foreign employment against 17,837 rupees earlier. Renewal fees have been revised to 3,456 rupees from 3,755 rupees earlier. The new rates are effective from the 1st of December this year. Now taking a look at more local news. A complaint was lodged at the police headquarters today claiming the recent landslide that occurred in Malapattava Valapane adjacent to a stone quarry was a crime and not a natural disaster. The complaint was lodged by the Surakimu Sri Lanka organization. We believe the illegal miners that operated the stone quarry are responsible for the lives that were claimed as a result of the landslide. This is why we lodged a complaint at the police headquarters today. This is not a natural disaster. This incident took place due to these illegal miners and political intervention from the government. We urge the police to enforce the law against those responsible for this and to punish them on charges of murder. The 
The provision of a permit to the stone quarry located adjacent to the area where the landslide occurred has stirred much controversy. As per a document issued by the Land Reforms Commission on the 23rd of October 2007, permission was granted to an individual named SMD Samarakon to operate this stone quarry. The said individual was authorized to operate the quarry with effect from 30th November 2006. This stone quarry was started in 2005. Brother-in-law of C.B. Ratnayaka, Samrakon, carried out the operations. In 2007, a landslide occurred and the operations of the quarry were halted due to the fear of the quarry being caught up in a landslide. This matter was pointed out during discussions between the governor of the central province and public officials in Valapane yesterday. this discussion confirms that the National Building Research Organization was aware that locals residing in this area in 26 homes were in grave danger. When we observe the area where the landslide in Valapane took place, we can see a layer of green fungus aligned towards the slope. The layer of earth on top of the fungus was weak. There is a layer of stone on the top of the slope. Every time blasting and drilling at the quarry takes place, the layer of earth and fungus is affected. The water flow between these two layers increases as well. When this happens for a very long time, landslides can occur. The Met Department is, is forecasting more rainfall in the northern, eastern, north central, Uber and central provinces. Showers in excess of 100 mm can be expected in the Jaffna, Kilnochi, Mulativ, Mana, Baunia, Anuradhapura, Polonnaruwa, Trincomalee, Patiklo, Ampara, Noorelia, Badulla and Monragala districts. The department is also forecasting showers between 75 and 100 mm in parts of the Sabragamua, southern and western provinces. Senior geologist at the National Building Research Organization, Dr. Vasanta Senadira, says that the landslide warning issued for the Kandy, Padulla, Nuarelia, and Ratnapura districts remains in effect. The Kiran Kinne Adi Reservoir in the Batikolo district is at spill level due to heavy rainfall. Our correspondent noted that all access to roads to Murankan Thiv, Sirambadi Thiv, Saravali, Pundugal Sene and other areas have been inundated. Vellavali, Mandur and Palachole in the Batikolo district were also underwater. Fishermen in the Trincomalee district refrained from setting out to sea due to the prevailing red notice that was issued in view of the stormy conditions. Farmland in several parts of the district, including Kinya, have been inundated. Main roads, including the Muttur Nalur Topur Road, have been flooded, while a number of by roads between Mannar Madu and Vaunia have also been inundated. A number of homes in Mundal, Kalpitya, and Alamkuda in Putlam have been inundated for several days. Gale force winds felled a tree onto a police post on the Aripur Road in Tintirimalai, Anuradhapura last night. Three officers who were on duty at the police post were injured in the incident and are being treated at the Anuradhapura Teaching Hospital. Train services on the upcountry line were obstructed by a landslide between Bandaravela and Diyatalava today. Sri Lanka Railways noted that the Colombo bound service is being terminated at Bandaravela while the Badulla bound service only operates as far as Diyatalava. Traffic flow on Prince Valley Road in Demodra Badulla was obstructed as a result of a cut failure today. Our correspondent noted that a high-tension power cable was damaged in the incident. The Road Development Authority has closed the Badulla Peradi near Chenkaladi Road until 6 a.m. tomorrow due to the threat of cut failures. Heavy rains damaged a section of the Morana Bakmitiava Reservoir in Damana Ampara that was under repairs.
The irrigation department notes that the spill gates of 27 reservoirs have been opened due to the persisting heavy rains. Former Minister Vishad Badiuddin has requested President Gotabe Rajpaksha to appoint an independent presidential commission to investigate and uncover the truth behind the allegations levelled against him with regard to clearing the will path to forest reserve to settle Muslim refugees and maintaining links with East Sunday bombing terrorist Zaharan. Rishad Badiuddin has sent a letter to the head of state while congratulating his achievement of being elected as the president. The letter reads that certain groups are actively engaged working for narrow political gains by leveling baseless and unfounded allegations against him, a leader of a recognized political party in Sri Lanka. He added that the parliamentary select committee appointed to investigate him on allegations that he maintained links with Easter Sunday bombers cleared him of any wrongdoing and the report by the police and the former IGP had already cleared his name from such allegations. In his letter, the former minister said, and I quote, I wish to stress that they are clearly attempting to destabilize our country by creating dissension on the lines of ethnicity, religion and caste by their acts, unquote. It added, quote, in 2009, the Muslim refugees displaced in 1990 received the opportunity to resettle in their original lands and I am most appreciative and thankful to Your Excellency for your valuable support extended to those displaced Muslims and giving them the opportunity." Unquote. He further noted the lands abandoned for 30 years were named as forest reserves by the Forest Department and that then President Mahindra Rajapaksa managed to resettle the displaced in their original lands. Former State Minister Ranjan Ramanayaka sat for the GCE ordinary level English examination earlier today. He sat for the exam as a private candidate. Ranjan Ramanayaka sat for the exam at the examination centre which was situated at the Sri Jayavardhanapura Balika Vidyale in Kote. I previously had an S for English. In order to do law, I need a C. That is why I sat for the exam. Ranjan Ramanayaka expressed these waves regarding the reports which claim that he will not be given nominations from the UNP to contest the upcoming general election. I am on the side of the UNP. I spoke to Ranil this morning as well. I asked him if I will be given nominations. He said several MPs have complained requesting me to be removed and that he will consider it in the future. Only a henchman of Imal Viravansa has said it so far. He wants to contest from Gampaha. The party has not made an official announcement. Sajid Premadasa contacted me a few days ago. He told me he has not reached any such decision. He said had he been voted in as president, I would have been appointed to nab all the thieves as I am genuine and do not have any allegations against me. We are not greedy to stay in power. I would like to request the people, if it is possible, make me an independent MP. I will do the rest. I won't bid farewell. I will contest. If I lose by any chance, I will know that I have been rejected. Then I will go back to acting. Meanwhile, a statement made by former Finance Minister Mangala Samaravira regarding his future political career has gone viral. <laughs> The next general election will be the last time I will contest for an election, not the upcoming election. Many claim I will not contest at the upcoming election. I will contest the upcoming election and that is certain. I am 63 years old now. If I engage in politics for another five years, that is more than enough. We all must know at when and what time we should retire. A seminar was held in Colombo today on the Millennium Challenge Corporation's Sri Lanka Compact. The seminar was organized by the National Professionals Association. The U.S. is transitioning the world from its economic trap to its security trap. It is in this context that the SOFA agreement was signed in 1995. We sent a response to this and it has been effective from that date. In fact, there wasn't even a signing. This agreement was signed again in 2007 when current President Gotabe Rajpaksa was serving as Defence Secretary. There is a dangerous feature here. Whilst the early agreement lapsed in 10 years, there is no end date for this agreement signed by Maitripala Sirisena and Ranil Vikramasinghe. We do not fall into this security trap only because of US intervention. 
There are two defense agreements that were signed with China on 23rd of May in the aftermath of the Easter attacks by former President Maitri Pada Sirisena. China will be handling our military communication system in the future and will be providing aid for this. It is Huawei technology that will be used for this. We know that Huawei is a main point of contention in the Sino-US trade war at present. The US has been doing this since before the Easter attacks and in the aftermath of the Easter attacks. Both India and China have dragged us into a security trap. This is the context in which the MCC agreement is being put forward. We need to think about how much truth there is behind the beautiful words being spoken to us by the US. It is very clear even with the question of the current president's citizenship that can be used to trap him either willingly or unwillingly. It is difficult to escape the US defense trap just because one is a nationalist or speaks about the country all the time. This requires a broader understanding and a broader set of politics and principles. Maldivian Foreign Minister Abdullah Shahid is currently in Sri Lanka on a three-day official visit. And taking a look at more local news, Naval Special Warfare Maritime Security Course 2019 commenced in Trincomalee at the auditorium of the Special Boat Squadron. Now, during the squadron, officers and sailors of the 4th Fast Attack Flotilla, Special Boat Squadrons and personnel from the Naval Special Warfare Coastal Troops, one of U.S. Navy, were present at the inauguration ceremony. 24 personnel from the Special Boat Squadron and 12 personnel from the 4th Fast Attack Flotilla will be undergoing the training program, which will be conducted by eight trainers of the Naval Special Warfare Coastal Troop, one of the U.S. Navy. We are now crossing over for a short commercial break. Welcome back to the news. Maldivian Foreign Minister Abdullah Shahid is currently in Sri Lanka on a three-day official visit. The Maldivian Foreign Minister arrived in the island last night, met with Foreign Minister Dinesh Gurdwadana this evening, according to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Meanwhile, Minister Abdullah Shahid met with Prime Minister Mahindra Rajpaksa at Temple Trees this evening. The President's Media Division said the Maldivian Foreign Minister met with President Gotabe Rajpaksa this evening. The media statement said President Gotabe Rajpaksa and the Maldivian Foreign Minister had agreed that all countries in the Indian Ocean must be free and open. President Gotabe Rajpaksa, expressing views about foreign investment, said Sri Lanka is not only open to China, but is also open to countries such as Japan, Australia, Singapore and South Korea. The Maldivian foreign minister will remain in the island until the 7th of this month and is due to meet several senior state officials. On to more local news now, the following views were expressed during the cabinet media briefing held today regarding the alleged incident where an employee of the Embassy of Switzerland was abducted and questioned. We have clearly indicated that government is willing to cooperate with, with any party related to this particular incident. And unfortunately, there is no complaint, there is no, uh, no evidence, and there is no even circumstantial evidence. And so we have requested them to come forward and make a statement for which they are not complying with. We believe that this is, uh, this is an attempt to bring Sri Lanka to disrepute. Problem is she is still missing now. Yeah, this is the trouble. That's why we request them to come forward and make a complaint at least and, and to provide evidence, whatever the evidence that they have. We have uh, requested several times. We have requested the embassy and also this particular person is not known to anybody. We haven't seen. Nobody has seen her. It seems she has fled the country. Well, we don't know. As much as we know, she has not fled the country. I don't know if you have any questions. I don't know if you have any questions. I don't know if you have any questions. It was clear that he knew something about the matter. So a request has also been made to record a statement from him because it was quite evident that he knew something. I don't know if you have any questions. 
මොකද ඔච්චර කාලයක් යනවා අඩුම ගන්න එහෙම දැනුවත් කර රටක් විදිහට රජයක් විදිහට තීරම හරි තීරණයක් ගන්න හැකි යවන්නේ නැද්ද ඒ ඔච්චර කාල ඇදින්නේ මේක මේ අපිට අනවශ්‍ය we don't want to put unnecessary pressure you know what happens then we will be accused to unduly influence in embassies and high commissions so let's be a bit patient නැගෙනවා ඒ නිසා අපිට ටිකක් ඉවසෙමින් බලන් ඉදිමු award winning sri lankan writer and poet karl maler has passed away at the age of 84 Born on the 22nd of October 1935, Karl Muller is a Sri Lankan writer, poet and journalist best known for his trilogy about burgers in Sri Lanka, The Jam Fruit Tree, Yakadayaka and Once Upon a Tender Time. He won Gratian Awards for The Jam Fruit Tree in 1993 and a State Literary Award for his historical novel Children of the Lion. Veteran journalist and writer Karl Muller was honored by the state being bestowed with the title Kala Kirthi. Muller was born in Kandy, the eldest in a family of 13. He studied at Royal College Colombo and he left home at the age of 18 to join the Royal Ceylon Navy as a signalman. He went on to briefly serve in the Ceylon Army and later joined the Colombo Port Commission as a signals officer. Next Muller tried his hand at journalism and eventually marrying Sochan Harris and leaving Sri Lanka in order to work at newspapers in the Middle East. In a statement on Facebook his son Jeremy Muller said and I quote at 2 o'clock on the morning of the 2nd of December 2019 Karl Muller breathed his last. He added and I quote he had been suffering from dementia and was getting progressively worse during his last years. The statement read my father Karl Muller accomplished much in his life he was a seaman and then a military man it added and i quote he was a musician played the piano by ear and had a gift of being able to play anything that he heard he had a wicked sense of humor and a rare gift of writing satire and comedy he was prolific in his writing words were always his friends and he could string them together to tell stories or expound facts as he saw fit unquote Karl Muller joined Channel 1 MTV on our program Nothing Personal At the end of it all if you could trade it all back and have a happy childhood would you take it No It is that experience it is what sort of a ring I went through when I was young that has put me into this position today His final rites were performed on the 2nd of December at the Mahayava Cemetery Time now for tonight's international news roundup. Sri Lanka's athletes added to their medals tally today at the 13th South Asian Games which are currently underway in Kathmandu, Nepal. The Sri Lankan swim team won gold today in the 4 into 100 relay as the swimming events got underway this evening. Lakshika Sugandhi won gold today in the women's 100 meter hurdles event. She recorded a time of 13.68 seconds. Sri Lanka also won bronze at the event. Sri Lanka's Aruna Darshana won gold in the men's 400 meters with a time of 46.69 seconds. Lakma Priyanta won silver. Dilshi Kumara Singh won gold in the women's 400 meters with a time of 53.4 seconds. Hashini Prabodha won gold in the women's triple jump. Vidusha Lakshani won silver. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka's Isuru Kumara won weightlifting gold in the men's 55 kg category. And on that victorious note, we wrap up news for tonight. For the news first team, I'm Ramesh Rugal Bandara. And I'm Zeenat Musafa. Thank you for watching News First. Good night.